Hi, my name is Jessica Mester. I'm a genetic counselor at GeneDx and a member of the ClinGen Education Workgroup. This presentation will discuss application of population data for the purposes of variant interpretation, focusing on variants with low allele frequency and homozygous or hemizygous occurrences. During our time together today, we'll think about evidence that supports either a pathogenic or benign variant classification with respect to population data. Of note, this talk is going to mainly focus on how to think about variants with low allele frequency in population databases. High population frequency variants will be covered by another talk in this series. While most of our discussion is relevant to autosomal dominant disorders, we'll also take some time to discuss how this topic relates to homozygous and hemizygous occurrences. In the 2015 ACMG AMP guidelines, the moderate criteria PM2 is defined as applicable to variants that are absent in the population databases most widely used at the time of that publication. 1,000 genomes, the Exome Sequencing Project, or ESP, and the Exome Aggregation Consortium, or EXAC, now known as NOMAD. Today, the most widely used population data resource is NOMAD, so we'll use it as the reference point for much of our discussion. NOMAD and many other population databases attempt to exclude individuals with severe pediatric onset diseases to get as close as possible to a cohort of individuals who represent the general population. However, individuals with adult onset conditions, many of which demonstrate reduced penetrance in a genetic predisposition context, are not excluded it would be nearly impossible to recruit a cohort of older adult individuals completely negative for phenotypes related to cancer, heart disease, or neurological disorders, many of which have a genetic component. As a result, when you look at the variants in NOMAD for genes related to adult onset conditions, you will often find individuals with pathogenic variants in those genes. Let's take a look at MLH1 as an example, which is considered a highly penetrant gene causative of Lynch syndrome, an autosomal dominant disorder causing adult onset colorectal, endometrial, and other cancers. This screenshot shows us the several MLH1 variants present in NOMAD categorized as being predicted loss of function, or PLOF, meaning they are predicted to result in nonsense mediated decay and haploinsufficiency, and are therefore likely to cause Lynch syndrome. Most of these variants without some kind of QC or quality control flag indicating a potential issue with data quality are present in just one or a few individuals, but they're present. Since NOMAD doesn't automatically exclude someone who may have had an adult onset cancer, they could still be phenotypically affected and present in the NOMAD cohort, especially since one of the studies that contributes to NOMAD is the Cancer Genome Atlas, or TCGA. The newest version of NOMAD has the ability to exclude the proportion of individuals recruited from TCGA, which consists of about 3,300 individuals, as well as individuals from studies focusing on neurologic phenotypes. However, excluding individuals from the TCGA co cohort only eliminated, eliminated five of the variants identified in one individual each from our list. This is a good example of why you can't draw a straight line between finding a variant in NOMAD and considering that variant to be benign. Think about Lynch syndrome. Although it's considered highly penetrant in the world of hereditary cancer, penetrance is not 100%, and agent-first cancer diagnosis may not be until a person is in their 60s or later. The mean age of the NOMAD cohort is 55 years, but individuals as young as 18 may be included. It's also possible that someone with Lynch syndrome and a history of cancer was a member of one of the non-cancer studies that contributed data to NOMAD. For these reasons, there are many individuals with known pathogenic founder variants in NOMAD. You will also see heterozygous observation of variants known to cause recessive diseases. For autosomal diseases, carriers are typically completely unaffected, and many X-linked disorders are non-penetrant in females. Based on these caveats, Several of the ClinGen variant curation expert panels have permitted application of PM2 even when a few alleles are present in a large population cohort such as NOMAD. For those working in the space of variant curation or working to establish gene-specific variant curation guidelines, this brings up another important point. Not every variant that is called pathogenic has to have PM2 applied. 
A pathogenic variant that is known to be a population founder or recurrent variant is going to result in multiple affected individuals and families with clinical presentations that allow for application of other ACMG AMP criteria resulting in a pathogenic classification. Below are a few examples of gene-specific PM2 criteria crafted by different ClinGen expert panels. Similar to the Lynch syndrome example we just thought about, several expert panels for dominant conditions with phenotypes with reduced or later onset penetrance allow PM2 to be applied even if a few alleles are present in population databases. Expert groups focusing on recessive disorders have taken a similar approach. And a few groups have maintained that a strict absence be required for criteria application with the TP53 expert panel and others dropping population absence to supporting level evidence, given that absence or very low frequency of the variant in population databases may not be a strong enough predictor of pathogenicity to warrant a moderate evidence level. While NOMAD is a wonderful resource that is constantly expanding in terms of the numbers of alleles and included subpopulations, we also wanted to make you aware of other population-specific databases that are interesting to explore. Some of these might be particularly beneficial to investigate if you're looking for more information about a patient with an apparently novel variant from a part of the world, such as the Middle East, which isn't specifically represented in NOMAD, to understand if the variant might have other observations in individuals from that part of the world. Thinking in terms of homozygosity, while homozygous occurrence isn't clearly called out within the current ACMG AMP benign criteria, for some disorders it may be appropriate to consider, perhaps falling under the BS2 or BP2 criteria. Population databases like NOMAD typically include individuals who have reached adulthood and are relatively healthy, at least in the context of severe pediatric onset conditions. Therefore, if a condition causes early morbidity in individuals with homozygous or compound heterozygous pathogenic variants, or if homozygosity for knockout or knock-in pathogenic variants is embryonically lethal in animal models believed to accurately reflect the human phenotype, we shouldn't expect to see an adult, relatively healthy, homozygous individual captured in a population-based cohort. However, given the nature of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, a variant with appreciable population frequency that isn't being selected out of a population will result in a homozygous case being discovered by chance as the number of individuals in the population grows. For this reason, it's important to craft benign criteria around the idea of homozygosity that don't directly double dip with population frequency by incorporating lack of phenotype as a requirement for application as opposed to just the mere identification of a homozygous individual. But again, if a disorder might have variable penetrance, or there's not evidence that biallelic pathogenic variants would be embryonically lethal or result in a severe phenotype, it may not be appropriate to consider an apparently unaffected homozygous individual as supporting a benign interpretation. Hemizygosity which is the presence of a variant on the X chromosome in an individual who only has one X, may be informative in a manner similar to homozygosity. An interesting example to look at in NOMAD is MECP2, related to Rett syndrome, for which females and the few affected males that have been described are typically affected at an early age and with phenotypes that would lead to exclusion from the NOMAD cohort. Looking at MECP2 loss of function variants in NOMAD, some of which are hemizygous, we can see that they're all clustered at the three prime end of the gene and so would be predicted to escape nonsense mediated decay. This little blip of loss of function variants in the middle are related to an alternate transcript. Observations like this suggest that that three prime truncations in this area aren't truly loss of function and that the region of the protein that is lost isn't likely to have great functional importance, which are pieces of information that are taken into consideration when thinking about what, if any, pathogenic criteria would be applied to three prime truncating variants in this gene. In summary, I hope you come away from this talk knowing that the first step to applying population data to variant interpretation is to understand the nature of the gene or condition in question. Especially for disorders that are later onset or associated with reduced penetrance or phenotypes not considered severe enough to merit exclusion, you may very well see pathogenic alleles in a population-based relatively healthy cohort, 
and that shouldn't dissuade a pathogenic classification if that's where the other evidence is leading. As with all of the different types of evidence that are considered for variant classification, population data is just one piece of the puzzle. I hope this has been a useful introduction to applying ACMG AMP criteria for variants with low allele frequency or homozygous and hemizygous occurrences in population databases. Please visit www.clinicalgenome.org for additional educational resources and to learn more about ClinGen initiatives. Our funding sources are listed at the bottom of this slide. Please feel free to contact ClinGen by email at clingen at clinicalgenome.org with questions or feedback. Thank you.